Deep in the ocean, an orca pod is on the hunt. But these aren't your average orcas. These guys are organized. Marketing team, did you get those social media posts scheduled for the seal migration? Aye, aye, Captain. We even have an automated notification for all pod managers when they go live. They use Monday.com to keep their teamwork sharp, their communication clear, and their goals in sight. Monday.com. For whatever you run, even orcas. Go to Monday.com to dive deeper. Well, I don't see the point in waiting any longer. So let's bring around the star attraction. The one you came to see. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Miss Judy Gold. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I don't know what to say. I know that you're going to be shocked that, that this is my guest because you don't know how fucking cool I am. You think I only hang out with comics and the glitterati and, you know, really intellectual people, Pulitzer Prize winners. No, no. I have other people I know in this business and they're straight, they're male. Yeah. They're fucking like girls go crazy over them yeah. or used to. Uh, they're really talented. They're fun. And I did a cooking show with, well, we'll get into that. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Joey Fatone is here. What's up, Jenny? Joey Fatone in sync. Yeah. Joey Judy Fatone go. in Judy sync. Go. Judy go. Joey Fatone. How are you doing, sweetheart? I'm doing well. I mean, look, I was waiting for you for a fucking half hour because your shitty manager, Joe. That is, I will, I will, you know what? He takes full responsibility. I, I blame both of us for that because it, it is on the calendar and I got sidetracked with other shit that was on uh -huh. top of it. And he calls me and goes, uh, we fucking fucked up big time. And I was like, what happened? She goes, uh, hello, what well, we're supposed to do, Judy. And I went, shit. And I literally did, did, stopped I have, everything. Oh, you curse? That's terrible. All right. I anyway. Do, I do. Boy banders do curse sometimes. Motherfucker. All right. So. <laughs> Joey, we're going to talk about your very important life, and you've, you know, you're, so important. It so. is. You're so cute. I fucking love you. Anyway, so important. So fucking important. <laughs> so, Joey, you were born in Brooklyn. You're not, you know, you're a. I, I mean, all right. So, I know you haven't listened to my podcast. So, I have a thing called the Jew Bell. Okay. Anything nice. remotely Jewish gets a ring. So, since you're oh, born beautiful. in Brooklyn, okay, well, that is that is pretty much remotely Jewish. Yes. It was. Yes. It, we were. I lived in Brooklyn, Benson, Harris, Benson where Harris, all it was, baby. was Italians and Jews. That's it. Right. Italians and I Jews. I grew up in house. New Jersey. All Italians and Jews, and they're <laughs> the fucking same thing, except you have better food. That's the only no, difference. no, no. There was a couple places I went to, a couple of delicatessens, and places I know there's there was. Many places I went to that were Jewish, so I don't know. Okay, talking about. I know they're delis, but they're not fucking lasagna. No, fucking but you had knishes are good though. People don't know some people don't know what knishes are either. Yeah, but there's two kinds of knishes, Joey. I had the potato there's that one, flat. Though. There's that flat one you get at the fucking baseball game that's greasy and sucky, and then right. there's the big fucking stuffed knish. Mound oh. stuff. Yeah. Uh, and all right, what do you put on your knish? I, you know what? I eat a plain Jane. I know people put mustard on it and stuff. I eat a fucking plain Jane. I do. You know what I put on? What? Russian dressing and really? mustard. Yeah. And nice. Mustard. Yeah. I'm a There's Jew. There's nothing wrong with that, though. Thank you. I'm the same way with pretzels, though. I don't put mustard on pretzels either. You don't? Plain, plain. I'm just plain. I don't know. Okay. What, what do you put on your hot dog? Ketchup. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you fucking kidding me? My kids do be that. And There's I'm like, he, and the ones that snap good is Hebrew National, of course. Yeah. Hebrew National is a good one. Yep. Okay. <laughs> no one ketchup is not. It's supposed to be on a fucking hamburger. I know it's an oh, insult to all suck. shit, but I happen to like it. I'm not a very good mustard person. All right, very whatever. rarely do I put mustard on That's shit. That's because you're Italian. Like. You like the red sauce. Okay. Exactly. Anyway. All right. <laughs> so your uh, parents, Joe and Phyllis. Phyllis, you got it. Yep. Um, uh, grew up in the middle. I guess say middle range of of of, uh, of the world. I guess. And I lived literally in a middle family three brownstone house. I was in the middle floor. You did. You lived yeah, in the yeah. middle of it. My mother was a was a actually she was a server. Actually had a bunch of the play. Actually had a Jewish uh, um, one of the convention halls. 
So oh, cool. all the rushes, shunt, all the big uh, oh, uh, parties. Oh, that's so great. She had to do. Yeah, and then my dad was a cable splicer in New York City. He did a lot of stuff. That is that. so Man funny. Hopes. So wait, yeah. so you did she like the Jews, your mother? Oh yeah, she, she liked. Like, of course. I love I love going there sometimes when I couldn't when nobody was home. I'd actually have to go over there and sit there and wait for my mom to be done with work. And I remember that they used to have all the freaking pickles and shit. And I used to just sit right. back there and show hot Were dogs they and pickles. Like, oh, the look mouth. at Joey. He's so <laughs> cute. Oh, my God. Jo- all right. So you have a brother and a sister. Yep. Steve and Janine. Steve. I'm the baby. Steve and Janine. The what did they do? What does Steve and Janine do? Uh, my brother, actually, he's uh, right now, of course, not working because of the whole COVID crap. What? But uh, yeah. he is a, he is a, he's actually a video director. He started out um, doing a lot of tech work on tour with, with me. He was actually a videographer for NSYNC for a while. Right. Then he became a video camera operator and then became the video director. He was doing in, he's done NSYNC. He's done No Doubt, Stones. Britney, wow, uh, new kids on the block. They've done Backstreet. He's been doing now Bruno and Lady Gaga. He's been one he's been doing. That's all the amazing. Videos right and what so about Janine? All... My sister, she likes to sing. She does more karaoke. She's a uh, more uh, of a little bit laid back life, but she has a voice and she's loud as shit. Um, and your father sang, right? He yes, was in a doo wop group. My father was in a group called the Orions. Not a very popular group back then, but yeah, nonetheless, but what, you were... that's how I got influenced. So were you all right? So you're living in this. It... Did you have your own bedroom? No, me and my brother shared one. No, hell no. Yeah, me and him shared uh, it until I was about 17, until I moved to wow. when I went to the sink. Wow. Oh, yeah. So, all right. So you're living in, you know, Brooklyn. Your parents are blue collar, yep. uh, very close knit family. And your father, like, that is so great that your father he, was a singer, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, he basically, he loved the arts. He was like one of the type yeah. of guys that just loved the arts and how it really kind of flowed through me and how I found out my niche is I, you know, obviously always playing music and 50s doo-wop songs throughout the house. Right. But he did a lot of things in the Catholic community, in our, in our Catholic church. I went to Catholic school, so mm-hmm. they didn't have any drama programs or anything like that. And he did that in college, so he wanted to raise money for the church. So what he was doing is he would put on plays. He would sometimes even write scripts or original plays and have things at night down underneath where the church was underneath, they had a stage and everything. Right, right, uh, right. In the, whatever the hell it was called. But anyway, they did that. And basically that's kind of had the love for acting and singing and everything else and always wanted to do something like that. So do you think your father is half gay? There's possibility. My, okay. my sister is actually gay. Well, she's oh, half. I love we don't know. That. We don't she know which. Gay Janine! Woo! Go Janine, go Janine, go Janine. She was married. She was married. She adopted a little boy. uh, Finally realized that that's not 100% exactly who she is. And obviously, her and her, 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 her ex husband are actually really cool together and everything else. Uh, um, they have not really talked a lot about this, but it's it's for me. I'm like cool, you know. As long as whatever make the whatever for you. I love happy. I love that about you. You know, I'm like good at, yeah. No, she don't give a shit. She's she's very very. Uh, um, uh, outspoken, my my sister, good. I would say. She don't give good. a shit about anything. She it's will so tell you like hard, it is. It's so hard, though. Like, the Catholic Church, I mean, the Jews are bad, but they're they're very, the whole thing of the Jew, Jews being heal the world and, every, you know, right. you have to, like, it's more, it's political in a way. And the mm-hmm. Catholic Church is so, sorry, this is it. Blah, this blah, is blah. It. Nothing else. No, 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 can't, can't. Yeah. yeah. And so it's so hard for my Catholic gay friends to get to over. Really, I mean, yeah. I mean, even my best friend, my best friend Richie, I've known since kindergarten. I've known him from Brooklyn, New York. It took him a while to come out because he, his mother, was you know brought up full, pretty much fresh off the boat, actually, right, full on Italian, right. She basically told me and my buddy Carmine, who again the three of us have known each other, still hang out, right, well, always. He was nervous for a few years to tell me that he was gay. But the funniest part was, is he kept, he would go to a restaurant one day and he's like, hey man, he goes, how's everything? I'm like, is everything good? He goes, my friend that, that you met, you know, last, you know, a couple of weeks ago when you were in town, I'm like, yeah, he goes, well, he's not really my friend. He's like, this is my, it's like my, my friend, my friend, I'm like your boyfriend. He's like, well, yeah. I said, okay, so. Oh, I love you. So he looked at me, he's like, well, what, you're not mad? I'm like, why that? First of all, why that? Right, would I why be would mad? you be mad? I said, I love you. I don't love you. It's a big difference. Right, right, right. <laughs> I don't want but my was, penis near you. Yes, exactly. Right. We're not going to touch swords, but I'm going to give you right. a hug and kiss you and love you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're not, it's not, we're not, we're not playing, we're not crossing swords, we're not crossing the streams. But right. for, for, for him, you know, it was very hard to tell his mother. And right. when he told his mother, it was like one of those things where she called us up going, <laughs> Lily, she's going, Richie, you got to get a, you got to get a Richie out of the cult. Joey, you don't understand. It's a cult? He that he was in a cult. <laughs> so 
So I laughed. It was like, Fran, you can't pick who you love. You, you, right, you, you right, 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 right. Who you love. It doesn't like just out of nowhere. You or you, you take a coin and you toss and go. I like heads or I want tails. You know, right, you don't right, do right. that. You know, you just lo- you love who you love, and that's it. So it's like finally, of course, his mom came around. His his husband now, who he's married to. Obviously, his family was open arms and everything else. Right. So it's really cool. And then the same flip side with Lance, too. Lance was another one. Right. I know. That's what I was thinking. I was like, you know, and the more I read about you and the fact, like, you're such an... You're I am the gayest good, straight man ever. I know, but you're such a good <laughs> guy. Like, you're a fucking... Like, you're not... I like, try. I know, you know, but it's like you really... You live it. You're not like... Right, people, oh, people don't understand that. Asshole. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? It's, People don't understand that. Like when they see me, they're like, oh my God, you're you're really you. Like I'm like, yeah, no shit. What am I supposed to be? Hey. Right. <laughs> like, no. Yeah, it's 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 you know when I'm turning on the cheese in the sense of television. Right, right, right. But you know I'm not being so cheesy that it's completely fake and it's a facade. You know what I mean? Right. I'm not fooling anyone in that shit. Right. So what you see, um, what you get. Do you all right, so you grow up, you have like a normal-ish. Yeah, we childhood. I moved we moved to Florida when I like in 1990, when I was about 13 years old. Right, uh, but before that, to, before yeah. that, it was just like Catholic regular school. Brooklyn Catholic. Yep, singing, trying to sing like in like little things here and there in plays. I actually Were tried you to play popular. Um, I I was a, I was a a schmoozer a little bit with the ladies. I will say, even at a young yeah. age, I always oh, you I always like had that. You'd be such a charmer, like ah, I was that little typical Guido Guinea, you know, yeah. running around Brooklyn trying to trying to get hugs and kisses from all the chicks. But I did learn over the years because I hung out. Actually, for me, I hung out with a lot of a lot of women. I don't know why. I just did. Down the street from me, even though I went to a Catholic school, there was another girl that went to public school, and then the other girl, another friend of mine, Sabrina, that went to Catholic school. But we all hung out, and I must have hung out with them for four or five years. Just girls. Never hung out with dudes. I don't know why. You know what's never... amazing about that? Because <clears throat> people always ask me because I'm a les, you know, and I have two straight sons, like. What do you think the difference is? And I'm like, they have female best friends. Like they know how to be friends. They know with- how to talk to women. They right. know how to actually have respect and not be a douche. Right. And be <laughs> like and have like a bet like they're not all just objects for you to eventually fuck or think about while you're masturbating. Okay. Right, you know? right. And it's right. and it's it's there's not a lot of guys who know how to have a platonic relationship. No, it's true. And, and you know, it's so funny. I think, I think as you, I, and especially for me, as you get older, you know that there's more and more like that too. I mean, of course, right. when you're young, your hormones are going fucking crazy and you're, you're you know, you're right. a hornball. Right. But as you get older, you know, I start to realize the same thing where I've always even, it's weird at an early age. And then, you know, for me, I guess, I don't know, coming even to an older age, I have a lot more women friends than I do guy friends. Right. I think just because they're, I mean, I don't know. They're, Cause guys they seem are to be assholes. a lot more loyal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and they're smarter. So They're smarter. They give good advice. I will say that. Some guys are fucking dumb. Oh, please. <laughs> dumb fucks. Advice. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Do you ever find yourself playing the budgeting game? Well, with a Name Your Price tool from Progressive, you can find options that fit your budget and potentially lower your bills. Try it at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Not available in all states. You guys move to Florida when you're 13. Mm -hmm. How come you move to Florida? My parents always wanted to move. My mom always wanted to move to Florida. We visited a bunch of times. My grandparents at the time, before they passed, they moved down south over to like Jupiter area, Florida. Oh, wait. Um, so people from Brooklyn got older and moved to Florida? Shocking, right? Shocking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's Especially around you- Boca. And yeah. all those places too. Yeah, so they, so you, you would visit them, and then they, parents- we visit them. We went to Disney. My mother loved it so much. My dad one time had some sort of injury where he basically sued a company, got a little bit of money, and was able to move us out of Brooklyn. And that's right. kind of how it happened. We actually did. Moved- you feel like growing up in Brooklyn when you did, which you know, it's not the Brooklyn. Have you been back to Brooklyn since? Yes. I and it's like been. a fucking it's, night and day, right? The, yeah, it's great. Well, I know the whole thing with Williamsburg went from like shit to chic, basically. Right. Um, 
A lot more now has changed. I know it's a lot more as far as even Italians, but a lot more Russian. Even some friends yeah, of mine yeah, that are yeah. Russian from Dance with the Stars are actually living in Brooklyn now. They live right. there. So it's like Italian, Jewish, Russian now. It's a whole kind of melting pot. It's smaller. It seems and feels a lot smaller. Right. When you go back, because, you, you know, obviously you were smaller. Now I'm like a big fat yeah. juke. So it's like, wow, it's pretty cool to see. You know, I always go, every time I go to Brooklyn, I have to go to l and for morning gardens to stop by, get pizza uh, every time. Or yeah, I'll go to yeah, yeah. out. So, yeah. so do you feel like you still have a lot of Brooklyn in you? Because I do. I feel like I do. It comes yeah. out. And some yeah. people even say it like a certain wor- certain words I'll say or something like that yeah. will come out. And I'm like, what, what, do you, what, do you, what is that? Or is it, you know, when people say Mario, is it Mario or Mario? Mario. Well, Mario. Actually, Mario. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. People are like, no, Sorry. it's Mario. I'm like, no, it's not. It's not Mario. Mario. That's Mario. a fucking. <laughs> All right, Mario. Okay. So you moving at 13 is not easy for anyone. No, nervous. You so know, you get there. Living. Are you in a house now? Like your own we house? We were in a house. Yep. Living in a house. First time ever being in our own actual house. Nobody above us, nobody below us. Right. Um, you know, living there was just, uh, I actually stayed in my house the first summertime because I didn't know anybody. And I was waiting for the school year, obviously, to get into eighth grade, into the middle right. school, because I didn't know anybody. I had right. no friends, didn't Stop. talk to anybody. So get into the middle school and then finally meeting friends. And then there were things like chorus class and drama. And that's where I started to really start taking shape of what I really wanted right, to right. do, I guess. Right. You know, but it, it was it was that kind of thing. And then going into high school, it was like, okay. So were you chorus. like, were you like, Really popular in high school? That's a big question. Right Not now. hugely popular. I mean, in the drama program, I think I was. There was a, there was well, a core Well, you were the only straight one in the drama program? No. There was a lot really? of, you know, believe it or not, there was a lot of straight dudes in the drama class, shockingly enough. There, yeah. For some reason, that year, there was a barrage. There was obviously a couple of gay ones. There was one gentleman, I know Jared, a good friend of mine, who was Jewish? in the dance classes. Jared. Sorry? Was Jared yeah. Jewish? I think, huh? I don't know if he was Jewish. Probably was. I wouldn't okay. doubt it. Okay. I wouldn't. Just, just bring the bell anyway. He probably yeah. was. Uh, but, you know, he can't, he, he, we all knew he was gay, but it was around the time where people were you still can't. not. You it can't. Was not, yeah. It was not good at that time. So, I mean, but we all, again, we were in drama. Nobody gave a shit. Right, right, You know, right. you had a, in drama, you come out of your comfort zone. You have to be like, you know, all over each other kind of person. Right, 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 right. Of, of being there. So, again, for me, it wasn't. I wasn't like the popular kid, like I said, but I was I was known per se. As my senior year, yes, we were. I was a I was with a group of three other guys, and we were called the big guys, which was myself, my buddy Eric Garbus, his kid Joel Herman, and Luis Fonzi, who is now the kid called Luis Fonzi, who sings Despacito. You know the Spanish really? song. Yeah. yeah. So I've known him since middle school. So we grew up together singing a cappella group from ninth grade all the way till twelfth grade. So we were together wow. for four years. Wow. Crazy. Yeah. Okay. So that's kind so- of how I learned my acting chops and shit. And you met your manager when you Joe, were 17. Yes. When I worked at Universal Studios. We, uh, I started working over there when I was still in high school. And, what did you uh, do? Like you were in shows, right? It was, a Beetle, it was called the Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice Graveyard. Beetlejuice, and you played Juice Wolfie. Show. I played, you played Wolfie. Wolfie. Was, it was a hairy you Wolfie did. guy and sang and danced. Yeah. And you had five shows a day, and they were 20 minutes each. Yep. Continuous every day, Monday through Friday when I was not in school. Weekends, I was doing it. And, you know, you, sometimes you pull, like, an eight-show day. If you did it, you got overtime. But, I just, yeah, like, I can't admit, like, I, I was going to ask you about your work ethic later. But that is such, the fact that you would want to do that. It's, yeah. I, you know, it's a great learning tool. You right. know, it's, it's great for the repetition of things that, that were to come, I think. It was a great practice and learning tool for things, you know, uh, and, I, and I think a great, like I said, a great kind of, oh shit, my phone just went cock Look at that. It went limp. Look at that shit. How did that happen? It was like my dick. It just went limp. Um, so. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, you know, going there and singing there, I think like, again, it was like one of those things where it's like, okay, here's the rehearsal. Learn this chorus. Learn these songs. Now we're going to do choreography. And it was like thrown at me pretty quickly. But you were so, never like, oh my God, I want to go hang out with my friends. Oh my God, I want to go no, blah, blah, blah. No, oh. it was more or less, even when I did drama stuff in high school, I was always with my friends during the rehearsals. During right, the, right. And we were there for hours, you know? And then I go to work and those were my work friends. And they were obviously 18, 21 years old, a lot older right. than I was. So obviously I hung out with a little bit of older crowd every now and then. Right. Which is fine. So was it, were your parents like all in with this stuff or? He, I, my dad definitely was. I mean, he, he loved yeah, the arts. He was always yeah. into singing and dancing and stuff like that. So I was always like, hey, you know what? I, I'd love to do more of this. And he's just like, my dad literally was like, run with it. 
if you can do it, Joe, do it. You know, it's that kind of thing. He was always supportive of it, no matter what happens. You know, even when I signed a deal and literally signed a contract that we were going to go to Germany, my dad goes, you're 19 years old. What do you have to lose? Right, exactly. What do you, what do you, what do you have to, you have nothing. I love him. Go, good luck. I wish the best. I hope you don't fall on your face. And if you do, I'll right. help you pick, pick you back up, you know. Oh my God, I love him. Yeah, he's great. Do you, what were your brother and sister doing during this time? Um, my brother was working at Universal as well in tech. And my sister at times worked at Universal, but she also owned like a, she still does it though, a karaoke uh, right, uh, I love that thing. She does karaoke shit. So, I mean, it must be hard to be your older siblings. Anyway, no, she'll um, always tell. She'll always tell you she's the one with all the talent, and I got lucky. I stepped in shit. Is what okay, she tells I'm gonna have to talk to her because she's <laughs> in my club. Anyway, um, so you're 18. Mm-hmm. Summer of '95. Yeah. Crazy. How does it happen? We. I, the craziest thing of how I met, I was uh, in, in high school, there was the Mickey Mouse Club shooting in Universal, uh, Universal at Disney in Orlando. A few of the kids that were on the Mickey Mouse Club, I actually went to high school with. I even auditioned for the Mouse Club, got almost to the top 10 and then never made it for the screen test and all that stuff. Anyway, I'd met JC. I knew Justin. There's a girl named Jen McGill, um, Tony Luca, who's another one, Carrie Russell, Christina Aguilera. Uh, wow. Ryan Gosling. Uh, was in it. So I knew really? all the, all the, Yeah, oh yeah. We hung out with all those guys because they shot here in Orlando. So I happened to run, I was singing with the group uh with with the with the big guys. We obviously dispersed because we were graduating high school. Right around that time, I was trying to find other groups and I was singing with another group with a buddy of mine, Jason. We were supposed to go out one night to Pleasure Island, which is a dance place over at uh Disney's kind of like downtown Disney City Walk per se. Right. As I go down there, Jason doesn't show up, but I run into JC. And when I run into JC from the mouse, I'm saying, hey, man, how's it going? Good to see you. He was with Justin. How's it going? Blah, blah, blah. But then I see him with Chris. Now, Chris worked at Universal Chris Studios. Chris Kirkpatrick, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris Kirkpatrick worked at Universal Studios in another theme park. Uh, not another theme park, but, but in Universal, right. singing uh, doo 50s music. It was a different venue. Right. So I'm like, how do the three of you know each other? And literally, they're like, oh, we're getting a group together, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, well, listen, I'm not a bass singer because that's what they were looking for. And I was like, you know what? I'm not a bass, I'm a baritone, but I'll put a demo tape and I'll just send it to you if you like it, cool. If not, no worries about it. Because I knew about Lou Perlman. I knew about how Backstreet Boys was, you know, rolling into that and all that stuff. Right. Yes, he's Jewish. Uh, and, <laughs> and dad, yeah. And dad, yes. <laughs> and how he was, you know, how he was kind of getting Backstreet Boys together and all that stuff. So we're like, you know what? So I said, try it. So it seems like, like that universal, like that it, growing up in Florida and being a... Uh, sh- uh, someone interested in the arts. That is, that's like the high school for performing arts in New York yes. or the, the crazy, Broadway. Yes. It's like a well, fucking. Uh, yeah, um, it's, it was a magnet program. It became later on, the actual high school did become a magnet program. The crazy thing about it was, is all the people that were in that school, not to necessarily say they were in the magnet program, some weren't, some weren't, but you had people like Wayne Brady out of that. Yeah, of, I, was, I have Dr. him Pearl. written down. Yeah, yeah. Wayne Brady, DJ Khaled, Luis Fonzi, um, uh, AJ Brzezinski, who plays baseball, White Sox, Red Sox, Johnny Damon. Um, you have people that, uh, friends of mine, uh, head editor of Conan, which is a guy named by the name of Rob Ash. Another woman, Susan Barger, who's a producer of, of Broadway shows like SpongeBob SquarePants and Musical. Right. And then another friend of mine in New York who's casting named Diane Riley. So majority of these people, all of these, actually another guy that wrote Fresh Off the Boat. He's one of the writers from the TV show. Wow. Because it all takes place in Florida. Right. So all these people were in the same exact high school, which is crazy. That's so fucking. What's the name of the high school? The Doctor Phillips. Doctor Phil. Yeah. I, Weird. It's, it's so fucking crazy because people yeah. don't think of Florida that way. But no, it really and, and it's is. All different things yeah. too. You know, even my even Joe, even my manager. Everybody's gone dispersed in all these different forms of entertainment, and they're all from the same high school. It's weird. Very. And odd. your and your wife also. Yeah, well, no, she went. She went to Osceola High School. My ex, oh. she was in Os- She was in. She was in Kissimmee. I met her, and then she. Um, what the hell was she doing? She was working for Disney as well in characters, and that's oh. how I kind of met her. Okay. So yeah, we were together for almost almost twenty years. Uh, about five years ago, I guess got divorced, but we're, yeah. we're cool. It's not yeah, you know. I know. Again, we, I, look, we I've been there, done 16. that, baby. Been yeah. there. I've been, I, I was there until I was sixteen. I was dating her when I was sixteen. So I know. I read months, that, so. and I was like, oh my god. Oh it was crazy. God. I was yeah. 22 with my shit, uh, and and 
20 years and then uh, whatever. Uh, okay. So, so you send the demo, you say, and I heard you say you didn't like the demo. No, I did. Uh, you lost that love and feeling and it was absolutely horrible. You lost, you that, lost love. that love and feeling. Horrible. I tried to do like a bass line, you know, you never close your, shitty, horrible. Really? Horrible, horrible. You never close your eyes with a blood flavy sympathy. <laughs> your lips and Wait, there's no you have... tenderness like did before you... in your fingertips. I love it. I love it. That's so bad. But yeah, okay. I did a shitty demo. And I told him, I said, listen, I did a shitty demo. Why don't you come and uh, let me show you what I do. And I actually told him, come to Universal and watch the Beetlejuice show. And that's where Lou Perlman watched the Beetlejuice show. Justin and JC, I think, came out, or Justin did, and came and saw the show. Yeah. No so that's fucking way. Yeah, it's weird. Crazy, crazy, crazy. And then um, we sat down. He kind of just had a conversation. Hey, we love you being in the group. We were thinking about some other guy that was going to stay in the group. But they put him out. And then I even got my friend um, Jason who didn't want to be in a boy band like that. He wanted to do straight up hip hop R&B. And I'm like, but we're white. So it's not really going to work right now. Right, right, so right, maybe right. later on we could do those songs. But as of right now, I, I don't think that's going to be in our cards. So he bailed and we found Lance. Wow. That's how we got all Lance. Wow. So are you, like, you're so young and you're like, how fucking confident are you that you're like, listen, my demo wasn't great. Come see me. It's like, I, I just had balls have, of steel. I know. Yeah, I didn't care. I didn't, I, you know what? For some reason back then, and even, even nowadays too, people don't think I'm going to do certain things or like when I did, I did Whose Line Is It Anyway? We did like the whole, the whole improv thing. Right. And, you know, you do the noodle with the spaghetti thing. And it was really funny because I was telling my daughter, my older one about, you know, if she was asking me about a role, because I, oh, well, then again, yeah, my big fat Greek wedding. In the second one, I come out. I'm gay in the second one. Right. So she's like, are you going to kiss a dude? I said, if I have to, that's what I have to do. It's the art, it's, it's acting, it's yeah. what I do. So when I did Whose Line Is It Anyway with Wayne, one of the guys, they do the thing with the behind the back and it was the spaghetti, the old school, you know, yeah, yeah, lady yeah, yeah, in the yeah. tramp. And I was like, I told my daughter, I go, man, what I told you about kissing a dude? She's like, yeah, I go, let me show you something real quick. <laughs> and me and him slurped it up and I kissed him. And it was really obviously freaking oh, hilarious. That's it was funny. so cute. So I'm like, I'm like, you know, you've got to be out of your, you got to have fun. You got to be in your, when you're acting or doing shit like that. You have to be you out know, of your comfort zone. I had, I had, yeah, I had balls of steel. I didn't care. Whatever it was, do it. you check with your parents, like, before you, like, would you go home and say, Ma, Dad, I just said, I sent in a demo. I did, or were you just like... Um, no, I talked to them about it. Yeah, they're like, well, how was it? I said, oh, it went out all right. I said, but I think, you know, I think it would be better for them to see what I do. And it was, I was just like, I'm just going to tell them to come. And if they come, they come. If they don't, they don't. So I flat out said, I'm like, dude, the tape is horrible. Come see the show. Just come see what I do. This week's episode of It's Judy Show with Judy Gold is sponsored by BetterHelp. And if you know me, which I think you do because you're listening to my podcast right now, you know that I am a big advocate for therapy. I think it benefits everyone. I think there's so many people who need it, who don't partake. It is so important for your emotional health and well-being. Therapy is fantastic. It is in every stretch of the imagination. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, please do it. But please give BetterHelp a try. It is entirely online. It's designed to be convenient. It's flexible. It suits your schedule. You fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. I have switched therapists in my life. I've had many, many therapists, and you know, sometimes it's not a great fit for you, but don't give up. Therapy is beneficial. You can learn about yourself. You can process and just be emotionally healthy. I'm telling you, do it. Better help is great because, you know, when I used to schlep to my therapist's office, it was so annoying. You have to do it and you sit there and you wait and then... I'm telling you, doing it online is fantastic. And BetterHelp is amazing. I know a lot of people have used it. So if you're thinking about therapy, go to betterhelp.com. Let the gratitude flow. This is gratitude month, people. So you need to let the gratitude flow with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Judy Gold, J-U-D-Y-G-O-L-D, today and you will get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, 
H E L P dot com slash Judy Gold. You're welcome. Okay, so then in the very beginning, do you have any idea? No, we, 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 okay, this is fun and blah, blah, blah. We like, had a group, we had the group, that was it. Um, we really, it was really, like I said, we, we had the group, we really didn't do much. Two years we rehearsed the same freaking four songs, like rehearsing every, in a warehouse. How often? Every fucking day, four or five no. days a week. Lou actually put the other guys in a house because they didn't live in Orlando. So right. when they moved, when he went, when they put him there, it was Chris, JC, Justin, and Lance. And I lived, I, have, I still live with my parents. So I was like, you know what? I don't need to live in the house, right. but I'll come out. Obviously I'll be there every day. So every day we'd go over there, we'd do our warm ups. We'd have vocal warm ups with a, with a vocal coach. So Luke kind of basically took care of all that and paid. We learned a very valuable word called recoupable. That was a word that we, we learned. But, uh, we just started rehearsing for after two years, we weren't getting shit. And what happened was, is Lou teamed up with Johnny Wright, which obviously Johnny was managing the Backstreet Boys and they right. were doing very well in Europe. When Jive, the record, or actually BMG, the record company, um, Backstreet Boys left J- BMG to go to Jive. BMG record label didn't have another boy band. It was very popular in, in uh, Germany, Austria, and Switzerland because in the States, it was all grunge. It was Nirvana. Right, it was all right. that stuff. So that's around 94, 90, 95, 96-ish. Right. We had two German representatives from the record company come into Orlando, an American guy come in from the RCA, which was the sister company of BMG. And they all came and saw us perform in this warehouse in 95 degree weather in Orlando. They liked it. They saw it. They took, we went to Disney. We took them around Disney, went around the parks. We came back. One guy, the American guy said, you need to get rid of Lance and put in a, a black guy in there, first of all. And second of all, he's like, it may not, it may not never work. It may work because they wanted. To, I did, I think he wanted us to be like a color me bad, to where it was a couple of white guys and black guys right, and have right, it mixed. Right. But it was like, it was nothing wrong with that. But it's like we like our sound. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. So right, we're right. not doing that. So he kind of left. The two German guys obviously were a little bit Does in a rough. Does Lance know this? Lance know what about him being? Lance yeah, Lance oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, no. We told him flat out. No, we were honest with everybody. Like, dude, they want to kick you out and put somebody else in. We're like, hell no, that ain't happening. We worked. We so you guys were years. like fucking brothers already. Yeah, we were rehearsing for two years straight, living together basically for two and years. And did you ever do a gig in those two years? We did a national anthem uh, for a magic game. We did a national anthem for the Predators game. We got yelled at and told us to go back to church. Uh, uh, <laughs> we were singing. Uh, we've gotten a lot. Of, we just did little things here and there. Whatever we could do, wherever we sang, we sang. We we we, we danced. We right. sang. We do whatever. Okay. So. When the, when the German guys came from the record company, they were like, all right, well, we'll let you know in a couple of months. We don't know yet. Obviously, Backstreet left us. We have to really consider this and take a thing. Like, okay. They left. And the literally one week after, they called us up and said, hey, we're going to fly you to Germany. We're going to start doing photo shoots. We want to sign you guys. We're going to start recording and do a whole album. I was like, oh, okay. What? And that's when it was a big whirlwind and it just started picking up so, rapidly. And were you, like, pinching yourself? Like, is this really happening? Yeah, it's one of those things where, because you're in a different country, you don't really know the reality of it in a sense. Because of the fact that, you know, you're not seeing TV shows that you're normally used to. You're not seeing, you're not on the Jay Leno show. You're not on all these other TV shows. You're on Vet and Doss and shows like this that are big shows there, but what the fuck do we know? And where did you, so you you fly to Germany, where are you, what part of Germany? We were stationed in Munich most of the time, but we went to Munich, Berlin, Cologne, uh, you name it, we've been there, in a okay. sense. that's for all the dead Jews. Yes. <laughs> okay. Wait, so you go to, you're, where do you live? In Germany, live in just basically we're perform, yeah, we're performing with not even an album yet. We're doing photo shoots, we're doing all this shit, but we really still don't even have an album yet. We're recording the album as we're kind of promoting ourselves, per se. And are you guys, like, talking, like, what the fuck is going on? Like, what is going Yeah, what? it's weird. It's odd, you know? And again, we, we start rolling. I'm like, is this really happening? Like, we're all of a sudden, right. we're selling out, like, venues. Or we were opening up for a big German act that has opened up for, for you know, for Michael, uh, Michael Jackson. Right. So we're like, this is pretty freaking cool, you know, doing this shit. And it just got better and better. And then finally, when I think Backstreet and Hanson and Spice Girls came into the States, it opened up the door for us to come over. Now, the beauty part about that was is, we've already been rehearsing for over three and a half to four years. And we were kind of already ready, a well-oiled ready. machine. Right. So but when we what, came in, yeah. we, were, we, were, we, were ready, we were ready for a fight. You know what I mean? So it, was it, did it feel like, 
okay, we're big stars in Germany, but who cares kind of thing? Or do you think- No, came, we you- came We came back home and we were like, oh my God, you got to see it. There's thousands of fans. And my brother and everybody were like, you ain't famous anywhere. I mean, we right, don't give a right. shit. Because again, no social media. No, You don't see any of that shit. Nothing. Right, but were you feeling like, okay, this is cool, but we're in Germany. Like, were, were, you, were you feeling like- Oh, it was like a history class for me. It was exciting. Are you kidding me? We, you know, we, the first time, because I think BMG, the record company, wanted to show us off. So they do a whole bunch of showcases with the new artists. Right. So we went to South Africa. We went to Greece. We went went to to Germany. Switzerland. Yeah. So we started to do all these different, like, performances in all these different places. I'm like, this is like a, a, a history class. So when kids, all my friends were going to college. I was living college. You know what I mean? Right. Of course. Which is the only way to learn is to travel. Can you speak German? Very little. I speak in Deutsch. Very Deutsch. All right. So yeah, I learned well, all. I always it's not dirty my favorite things. language. No, huh? it's it's very it's very harsh. Very. <laughs> what did you did you being in Europe at that age? Did you learn? Like, what did you learn about the culture? And was it? I learned. Well, there's a lot of different things. I mean, again, just just in general, from being an Italian to going over to 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 Germany. First of all, not speaking the language. Trying right. to do that while even girls are like huge fans, but don't even speak English and how to talk to them. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Even like, you like, it's like, hey, you want to hang out? It's like, yeah, we party. I'm like, what is party? Like, what do you mean party? Do you like drink right. or like, do you go sit on a, on a, on a stool? Do you do a line of blow? What is that right. exactly does that mean? Right. I don't know what party means. You know, so it was learning that barrier. Um, I love the culture. I think it's freaking great. You know, went to Oktoberfest when we were really young just to check it out. But just recently I went back and had a freaking blast and actually drank because, you know, being, we weren't even 21. We weren't even, some of us right. weren't even 18, you know, so we weren't really drinking. But again, that, it wasn't so much of a culture shock. I think it was just a fascination and, and amazed how there are actually other people in the world that live differently than what I did. Right. You know, I'm on my own little freaking Brooklyn bubble. Right, and then right. you get out somewhere and you're like, oh shit, there's a lot more other things around here. And the you history, know? like you th- real, you think that William. Oh, yeah, the United old. States have yeah. no history at all. Right. To anything in Germany? Oh no, the the churches are you know thousands and thousands of year old. We have only a couple of hundred years old, maybe. Yeah. For here, so yeah, it's crazy. I know. It's really. So, and all right, so you're 19, 18, 19, and you you have all girls. All I mean, like, what the fuck more could you ask for? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well. At that time, we weren't making a whole lot of money because Lou was keeping all of it for himself, the cheap bastard. Fucking but, piece yeah, of shit. Piece of shit. So yeah, exactly. So he did that. So we weren't getting any money yet. But then, obviously, when things, then I couldn't ask for anything because there, there was actually money coming in. So there was, you know, the popularity, the women. Right. Was, it was fun. So did you have any weird feelings about Lou? Like, were you like this guy's, or did your parents think? Oh, this no, guy's we never. Ass, we always thought so. he was a little oddball. I always thought he was kind of gay in a sense, but I never right. knew any extent if he did or he didn't. I think honestly, for me, and I always make the joke, but I think it's true. I was too old. We were too old for what he liked. If that's what he did, right? Because I never. And seen that, it. They, I never there known were, it. um, there were, uh. You know, people talking about him being a pedophile and stuff. Yeah, I. You know, like I said, the only time that was very odd to me one day is I knocked on his door and he opened up the door in a hotel room, but the door was wide open and there's people around. The dude was just standing there in his underwear, and that was it. I asked him a question and that was it, and the door closed. That is the right. only time that is anything ever in remotely. Right, right, but he wasn't right. like, "Yeah, come on in." He didn't say that. Right, right, but right. But it was right. like. It was it was just one of the things, and I know other people, like I said, like Rich Rich Cronin, and a couple of people said that he's actually taking a pass at certain people. Oh. And I kept saying, "Well, good. At least I was ugly enough that he didn't hit on me, so I'm good. <laughs> I'm okay with it." You're not you know? his type. Um, no. Okay, so you come back to New- to New York. Well, you come back to the United States, right? And, and you are. And the, how long does it take? to get to the fucking uh, screaming girls, like... The big... Well, we started doing a few things, and nothing was really popping that big yet, but then there was a chance, and we say the story, and it's the truth. Backstreet Boys got offered to do a show called uh, In Concert on Disney. Disney was doing these different kind of concerts with, with bands or with groups all around the Disney property. Somebody was performing in the Magic Kingdom in front of the castle. Someone was performing right. in the Man Chinese Theater at the Hollywood right. Studios. They turned it down. So Johnny was managing Backstreet. Johnny Wright was managing Backstreet and us. It was like, hey, 
they can't do it because they're very busy and they don't want to do it. But I got another group that's brand new that's dances probably even better and sings maybe even better than Backstreet. So they took a chance on us and basically <laughs> we did the show and that's kind of what catapulted us. I mean, a lot of people, because it was a great combination and great timing because JC and Justin did the Mickey Mouse Club on the Disney Channel. Right, right, this right. Is kinda, this was kind of like their homecoming because the the show canceled. It's not anymore. But they, it was one of those things where, uh, uh, you know, a lot of their fan base, and it was hundreds and thousands because right. that's when cable really just came out. That's when Disney right. Channel just stopped, right. started coming. So people were watching the show. So to say, hey, we got two of the guys from the Mickey Mouse Club in a group that are going to be performing in front of the Man Shining Tina. Well, a bunch of people came. And that's kind of how it started. And it really kind of catapulted. And then I think when we first kind of made it, per se, is when we did Jay Leno. The first time we sat on that couch, and it was the first time we ever performed. Usually you just perform and that's it. It was yeah. weird that we performed, and then they had he had us sit on the couch. Did you know he was going to have you sit on the couch? Not until that day. That day, we didn't. I didn't know until that day. I was like, I like it so much better, sick. but... I know. Isn't it the best? And you're like, whoa, it's great. you know, because like, look at this. Johnny I, Carson. I know you do the little arm over the chair <laughs> thing, but I like panels so much better than doing stand up on. I mean, because you, oh. when you're doing stand up on those shows, it's like four and a half minutes. You you yeah, you only have like four and a half. That's right, and you got to get your and funny, it's like the funniest shit out. Every word, everything. You know, they have to go over it a hundred times, and, and it's like all the joy is taken out. But it's it's so much better conversational. Right. You know, when you're conversational on the cap. So after the Jay Leno, what happens? Um, after Jay Leno, so I think one of the other things right I now, remember. Where are you living? Where are you living? I was still actually at that, probably at that point, I think I might have still been living at my parents' house. Oh, I was my never, God, I love you so much. Because I never, I never, I, I was honestly was too busy to sit down and, and buy so, something or do right, something. Right, right. But then when I had the means, actually, when I was still on the road, my dad was really helping me out like help me with the house. Right. But the funniest part was, is, you know, money was coming in. And I was like, this would be fun. And what I decided to do is I was like, I want a couch, but I want every cushion different colors. I no. want, the, I mean, I bought the stupid shit. Oh, you shit were just ever. being an asshole? Oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. So I bought the stupid shit, but it was a small, it wasn't like big. It was like a 2000, 3,000, yeah. 200 square foot house. Yeah. Crazy. But being, you know, 19, 20 years old, having a, uh, buying your own house and being able to buy it off in cash basically was kind of a nice thing to do. And were your parents you know, like they were excited. They were just happy. No, they, they were just happy. In their they were house? Proud. Yeah, they stay in the house. Oh my I bought God, them I when them. I got really my first really big chunk of money. Um, I pulled up at my mom's work because my mom we only had one car and she used to drive all of us to work and her too. Right. So we would manage, you know, on weekends. She literally, like my sister and my brother, they worked at SeaWorld when my mother worked at that time in Florida. I worked at Universal at times, I mean, at Disney. And then my dad worked for the telephone company, freaking 411, answering fucking phone calls. Yeah. So I drive up after SeaWorld and I drive up in a Cadillac and I get out of the car. She goes, What's this? I go, It's yours. She's like, What? You know, I cried over. She cried. Oh, I love you. Then I bought my brother a car and then I bought my sister a car. And it was like, now I don't want, I told him, I looked at everybody, I said, listen, I don't want to hear none of you sons of bitches complain that nobody has a fucking ride anywhere. You oh. all have cars now, so good luck. You know, it was that kind of thing. It was awesome. Oh, and then, of course, later my- on, years later, I bought my dad and my parents a house, and, you know, they live there now, which is great. And, <laughs> you know, you got you to gotta help. You know, they brought you into this world. You got you to gotta make them feel Oh, please, I know. And you they know? were so supportive of you. Thank you so much for listening to part one of Kill Me Now with Joey Fatone. That's right. I had Joey Fatone on my podcast because I am cool. Now, if you like the show, make sure to subscribe and leave a review. It helps more people find this amazing podcast. Five stars only, please. Thank you. Also, if you have not purchased my book, yes, I can say that when they come for the comedians, we're all in trouble. There is really something wrong with you because you're listening to my podcast. You need my book. And... The audiobook was featured in New and Noteworthy in the New York Times book review. I was in the New York Times book review, people, and my parents are dead, so you need to buy the book or the audiobook. Just lower the volume. People are loving it. I'm telling you, I know you think I'm lying, but people are loving it. I'm going to read you one of the reviews on Amazon. I laughed out loud and learned so much. I'm reading it as a poem. I laughed out loud and learned so much, a perfect book in this uncertain time, both enlightening and highly entertaining. Thank you, Judy Gold. Okay, so you have no excuses. Go and buy it right now. 
it, it mean it really would mean a lot to me. So all the order links are on the homepage of my website, judygold.com, J-U-D-Y, G-O-L-D.com, or wherever books are sold. Okay? Also, you have to make sure that you're following me on Twitter and Instagram for all of my upcoming virtual live well, how many live events are there? But whatever. And, and all my dates and everything I'm doing. You can follow me at Judy Gold at J-E-W-D-Y-G-O-L-D. You know, like Jew Gold because I'm Jewish. Ugh. Anyway, thank you so much for listening. Please be safe. Please be well. Please wear a mask. Please vote. Please, please, please. I love you all. Thank you so much. And as we always say... So long. G-g-g-g-g-g. Don't forget to tune in next week to Just Kill Me Now. Um, for, it's Just Kill Me. Oh. Don't forget to turn uh, for part two on Just Kill Me. No, it's not. It's <laughs> just, just, just Kill Me. No. no, no Judy no. Gold's Just Kill Me. Just, just, just Kill Me Now. <laughs>